Rayshun today, honey. She's giving me Rayshun vibes today. <laughs> Girl. Carly wants to be a part. She wants to be a part. I may have to hang you to her right quick. Until I get this out. Anywho, so, um, I want to come on here and I want to apologize. Um, I want to address some things. Um, I come in love and I come in peace. Um, first of all, I want to say um, um, I apologize for um, getting um, a, a word wrong that I gave. Um, you know, I acknowledge the fact that um, Trump was not in office the second time the other day. So that's in, first and foremost, so I want to apologize. Um, it was a lot of people that, <laughs> that threw stones about that. And um, I just want to say I apologize. I'm sorry. Um, I was really coming from a good place. The Bible tells us to walk by faith and not by sight. And I believe that the Lord had gave me confirmations Um and told me that Trump would be in office the second term. So, um, I don't want to say I got ahead of myself. It's just my faith is, is very strong. And so, um, I was walking by faith and um, not by sight. And I got it wrong. You want to hold her right quick? So, I just want to put that on the record. That, um, you know, I apologize. Also, I want to say, when I was on live the other day, I was coming from a good place. I was coming from a humble place. And I really felt like I was doing a noble thing by addressing, um, you know, me getting it wrong or whatever. But uh, apparently, an acknowledgement was not good enough. And that's okay. Um, but I want to, um, I want to apologize if people took my views according to the word of God, if, if people felt like I was singling them out, I apologize. Okay. Um, that was not my intentions. I was not trying to single anyone out. I was just strict, sh strictly sharing scripture and sharing my beliefs, my views according to scripture. Um, so I apologize. That was not my intention. I was not trying to single out anyone. I was try not trying to make anybody feel like they were beneath me or anything like that. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm very misunderstood. I think a lot of people don't know how to take me. <laughs> um, I'm very, I'm very straightforward. I'm very confident and I'm very bold and I don't sugarcoat. And so... I have the fruits of the spirit, but um, God is is yet working on me. Okay, He's yet working on me. I'm not perfect. I don't mean to come off as perfect. I don't want to be perfect. The only person who was perfect was Jesus Christ. The only perfect person who is perfect is Jesus Christ. So I don't want to be perfect. You know, somebody say you're not Jesus. I feel like that was humorous. No, I'm not Jesus. I don't want to be Jesus. Um, <laughs> but um. I just want to put that out there. Um, but God is still working on me. And um, I'm passionate. You know, I'm passionate about what I do. Um, for a long time, I did not know what my calling was. Um, and then I came into my purpose. And um, I was excited. You know, I was like, okay. Because I never thought in a million years I would be evangelizing to people. But, um... 
but um this is the calling that God has on my life and I just I choose to um I choose to answer my calling. You know, the Bible says that many are called but few are chosen. And I choose to answer my calling and you know, just because I choose to answer my calling does not mean that I think that I'm better than anybody because I don't. But I think people mistake my my courage and my boldness and my confidence. Um they mistake that for something else. They think that I think I'm better. And if I have ever came across like I think I'm better than anybody, then I apologize. I'm sorry because I don't think I'm better than nobody. Um, let me tell you, we all living off God's grace and mercy. Okay, everybody, every one of us, me, her, Carly, my kids, <laughs> your kids. Everybody keys. Every, we all living off of God's grace and mercy. And so if I have ever offended anyone, please forgive me. I'm sorry. I apologize. So what else did I want to say? Um, another thing I want to say. Um, I'm not trying to push my religion or my beliefs off on nobody. Um, I'm not looking for attention. Um, I'm not looking for anyone to like me or new friends or, or any of that. I'm just doing what I'm walking in my purpose and I just feel bold and comfy, you know, to walk in my purpose. And I encourage people to walk in your purpose because when you walk in your purpose, you, you know who you are. Like, you know, you have a newfound confidence. You know who you are. You know why you was put on the earth. And it, you just, it's like you just real confident. You know what I'm saying? I can't really explain it unless you, you know, in your purpose, you won't really understand where I'm going with it. But to go from a person who felt like I didn't have no gifts or I didn't have no talents or I didn't know why I was here. You know what I'm saying? So many years I suffered from depression. I suffered from anxiety. I suffered in silence. And for so many years, I put on the front in front of my friends and family like I was okay. But deep down inside, I was really broken. And people didn't really know how broken I was. And so healing is a process. And so what happens is when you don't let God heal you or you don't, you just going through the motions and you don't know what your purpose is and you, you broken and all of these things that I was dealing with and battling, battling demons and things, what happens is all of those seeds and demons and spirits and stuff that's in you, they manifest and they manifest and they will consume you. That's why it's so important to forgive people who have hurt you because when you don't forgive them, it will manifest and it will take over you. It will take over your life. Depression took over my life. Anxiety took over my life. Unforgiveness took over my life. And those things manifested into something that is not me. Because that's not me. I'm not a mean person. I'm not an angry person. But those things, they manifested. And I had to surrender. I had to surrender to God. I had to sit on my bed one night and say, Lord, this depression, this anxiety, this unforgiveness, no more. Like, no more. I, mm -mm, mm -mm. This, no, this is not life abundantly. This is not my life. Like, like, I've been held captive by depression long enough. I've been held captive by being broken this long enough. I've been held captive by anxiety long enough, fear, doubts, stress, the pre all of that. No, mm -mm, no. And I had to say, Lord, I can't do it by myself. I can't forget these people who have hurt me by myself. I can't do it in my strength. I need you. I need you to help me. And it's hard. I'm telling you, it's it's hard to forgive people. It's hard to let go when people have talked about you, when people have done stuff to you. It's hard. But when you want God to forgive you, you have to forgive people. And I'm learning it. And this this journey that I'm on, it's it's not easy. You know, it's like a lot of courage to get on here. And do what I do. It's like a lot of courage to do this. I was just nervous when I got on here. But my whole reason for wanting to go into ministry is because I wanted people to see 
then God could take somebody like me. Somebody like me who was just a sinner, who was a nobody, and can use me. God can use whoever he wants to use. He can use whoever he want to use. And I just chose to answer my calling. Before I got saved, I didn't have no relationship with God. I mean, I grew up in church and all of that. My background, I, you know, I knew God, but until God showed me what he could do, and until he moved in my life and delivered me and, and brought me out of everything that I was dealing with, I didn't know God. I didn't know God. I didn't have a clue who God was. But when God spared my life, when he spared my baby life, when he restored my mind when I lost my mind, it wasn't no turning back. It's me and Jesus to the wheels fall off. And I'm going to do whatever he tell me to do. I'm going to say whatever he tell me to say. I'm going to go wherever he tell me to go because I know God is real. Can't nobody tell me God ain't real. Nobody. I got a, a real live miracle right here who I thank God for every single day. God is real. And I care about people's salvation. I may, you know, be rough around the edges or wherever or come across hood or however sometimes, but God is still working on me. You know, that's who I am. I'm a straight shooter. I'm just like that. I just, I don't do mess. I don't do fake. I don't do drama. I don't, I don't do it. I have been through too much. I just, that, that ain't me. But God is still working on me. He's still working on me. We are all living off of God's grace and mercy and um, what was I going to say? I was not singling out anybody. So I apologize if anybody felt like I was singling them out. God, that God gave his only begotten son for all of us. He died on one cross for all of us, for the homosexuals, for the heterosexuals, for the child molesters, for the rapists, for the killers, for the stealers, the liars, the cheaters, the adulterers. Everybody, he died on one cross, the thugs, the preachers, the pastors, the politicians, he died on one cross for everybody. And our sins have already been paid for. He paid a debt that we could not pay. He paid a debt that we could not cash. So, if I'm going to be in ministry, then yeah, I'm going to encourage people to repent. I'm going to encourage people to come to Jesus because Jesus can save. Jesus is the only one who can save you. He saved me. He saved her. He can save. He can save anybody. He ain't too much. Nothing you can't do that he can't save you from. Trust me. I know. I didn't be everything up under the sun. And I ain't proud about it, but... When you become born again and you give your life to the Lord, he forgive all your past transgressions. The Bible say when you become born again, you become a new creature. I am a new creature. People still looking at my past. They looking at, oh, she had a, a mental breakdown or whatever, and they're not looking at the triggers. You are not exempt, okay? God had a plan and a purpose for me. And God had to come through my life with a bulldozer, okay? He had to come through and shut down shop and say, no, I got a job for you to do. I got work for you to do. I got some things I need you to do. Because you a soldier. I was already a soldier and didn't know it. I have been through hell my whole life. I am a living, walking testimony. The stuff that should have killed me. They made me stronger. So it's the one that I'm even in my right mind today. It's by God's grace that I'm even in my right mind. Because people don't know my story. They don't know what I've been through. They don't know the pain that I feel. They don't know the tears that I cry. They don't know the prayers that I pray. And it takes a lot of courage and a lot of guts to get on here and humble myself. And apologize to everybody. And to give my all. I really do care about people. This world is wicked. I watched a video last night that was so disturbing to me. I'm not going to even share what it was. But, man, these people is wicked. But, I don't feel like I'm better than everybody because I'm walking in my purpose. I just feel confident. And I'm, and I'm bold. And I'm courageous. And I'm just doing what I feel like God has called me to do. And that's it. I mean, I'm going to say what he tell me to say. 
And another thing. And another thing. I'm the <laughs> coolest, most humble person you will ever meet. I'm telling you, anybody will tell you. But just because... I choose to walk on the straight and narrow path now don't mean that I think that I'm better than everybody because I don't. I don't think that. It's just the stuff that I used to do. I can't do no more. <laughs> this, but I mean, I it, it be things I want to <laughs> indulge in, but I can't because of what God has brought me, what he has brought me and what he has brought me through. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It wasn't nobody but me and God in that hospital room. It was it wasn't nobody but God who got me through the situations that I've been through in my life. So God didn't turn his back on me, and I'm not gonna turn my back on him. God is real. Trust me, I know. Oh, I know. I know he real. Can't nobody tell me that he ain't real, because he is real. He is alive. He is well. And he he know all and he see all. But he's forgiving. He's a loving God. He's a forgiving God. He's a gracious God. He is a provider. He is a forgiver. He is all of that. He is everything. And he is bigger than COVID. He bigger than sex trafficking. He bigger than drugs. He big he bigger than all of that. Trust me, I know. I know. You got anything you want to ask? <laughs> I ain't even get on me to get on here and be no cry baby, but but that's your sincerity though. Like that that lets people know that you for real. And um, I just want to say that I'm so proud of you and your growth and how the Lord has groomed you how he is continuing to groom you and your calling your anointing and all of that is real it doesn't have to be validated and verified god has already done that for you and i just want to encourage you to continue to do what he has called you to do to walk in your purpose to be the woman of god that he has called you to be no matter what kind of backlash you may get no matter who understands and who doesn't because it's not for people to really understand it's for you to fulfill the purpose that God has for your life so I'm just here as a support for you to um, stand with you and for you to know that God has your back and that I have your back and that I love you and that um, all is well all is well and like you said, it's it's all about lifting up. <laughs> it take a whole bit about this thing, but it's all about um, lifting up the name of Jesus. It's all about lifting up the name of Jesus, and you're doing that. And you know, like you said, you're still growing. God is still grooming you, and you have come a long way. I have. You have come a long <laughs> way, and you are a woman of God. Period. Yeah. And I'm very proud of you. You should be very proud of yourself for for what you're doing. It takes a, a lot of courage. It, it takes a lot of boldness. It takes a lot it of is. guts. Because everybody don't want to hear the truth. The truth yeah. is, hell is hot. And it's a real place. And any one of us who have not repented of our sins no matter who you are no matter what you indulge in if you're if you get caught in your sin if you die in your sin unrepentant you're not going to see the kingdom of God and that's just what the bible says it ain't got nothing to do with you it ain't got nothing to do with me it's what the word of God says and his word is true heaven and earth shall pass away before his word pass away and so whether people choose to believe it or not it's up to them and like you said, you're just walking in your purpose. You chose to, to answer the call. Many are called, few are chosen. And you chose to answer the call. And that's what you're doing. And so, I support you, girl. Thank you, friend. <laughs> I'm with you, Thank honey. You. Yes. I don't know. I don't know what else to say. That's what I... Uh... Okay. God is good. God is If you good. don't know Jesus, come to know him. Come to Jesus. Come to him. He's he's there with his arms wide open. He is. He waiting. He waiting for people to repent. He is. It is a it is an urgency for repentance though. It, it really is. So um that felt, felt good. That felt empowering. Yes. <laughs> it felt empowering. 
Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm not gonna cry. You're not gonna cry? No. Okay. <laughs> I feel like Mary J. Bro like, I'm not gonna cry today. <laughs> I don't think I got it. Let me see. Is there something else I wanted to say before we get off here? Um, I think that's it. Yeah. I think that's God it. God is good. God is good. Yes. He's faithful. He's caring. He's loving. He's empathetic. He's he is. Kind. I do want to say this, though. Um, Repentance is a process. It is a process. Repentance mm -hmm. is a uh. <laughs> It's a process. It's a process of elimination. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I have urges and things and stuff I, my flesh would like to do. But um, I just choose not to indulge in things. But uh, repentance is a process. Forgiveness is a process. It's a process. You cannot... When you've been hurt to the magnitude that I've been hurt... It, it's a process, you know what I'm saying? But you have to forgive people even when it hurts, even when you when they do things to you because you got to look at, you want Jesus to forgive you on the day of judgment. You want him to forgive you for every sin that you ever committed in your life. And you want to stand before him and you want him to let you into his kingdom. And so he said if you don't forgive whoever hurt you then he said his father in heaven is not going to forgive you the same measure that you judge it will be measured unto you he said before you try to take the speck out your brother's eye take the speck out your eye first so in other words sweep around your own front porch before you go sweep around somebody else's Make sure you good. Make sure uh, your, your duck's in a row. Make sure you good before you try to point fingers and criticize and judge people. Because there's only one judge. And he sit high and he look low. And he know all. He see all. And he everywhere. So, we should not be. I know. It was thank you, Holy Spirit. Yes. It's, listen here. The doors of the church is open. <laughs> I always wanted to say that the doors of the church are open. Listen, y'all did have me weak on some posts the other day, though, when y'all was coming for me. Uh, what was funny to me? Somebody said, you not Jesus. That was funny. Apologize to the congregation. <laughs> you. That was funny. So I'm apologizing to the church. Not my church, but the church the is body the Christ. body of Christ. So I am... <laughs> I'm apologizing to the church. I'm apologizing to the body of Christ. Okay. Um, That's very big of you. Thank you. Listen, I'm growing. Because <laughs> I'm telling you, y'all was going in on me. You were going in. But I did not back down. I don't back down. I don't. I don't back down. Yes, ma'am. Do you want to join the church? <laughs> <laughs> Mommy <laughs> got an old toothbrush I can use. A who? Old toothbrush. Uh oh. Uh, I don't know, baby. Look in the drawer upstairs. Okay. Yeah, it, I know. It was a few more things I wanted to say. Um, it's too much division in the body of Christ. Um, it's it's too much division. Um, uh, it's too much discord chaos too much mess too much judging too much criticizing too much pulling each other down and these ain't even worldly folks okay these is folks who supposed to be believers followers of jesus christ okay it's, it's too much of that we got to do better y'all we got to pull each other up we got to uplift each other it's too many people with jealous spirits and envious spirits and these hateful spirits and mean spirits and judging and gossiping spirits. That is not of God. That is not of God. Mm -mm. But God is he about to clean some house. Another thing too. God is dividing his wheat from the tail. He pulling them weeds. He getting them weeds up out of there. If you don't know what the wheat in, in the tail is, it's a parable in the Bible. They talk about God. He's separating his, his people he separating the church, the kingdom of light from the kingdom of darkness. And he pulling them weeds. He pulling them tails up out of there. That's what he doing. It's, it's a war going on. It's a real war. And a lot of times I be 
so passionate because I know what's going on in the spiritual realm. The spiritual realm is, is real, y'all. It's real. People walking around here with demons in them, spirits in them, all kind of stuff. Broken people. I see so many broken people everywhere with depression and anxiety and, and, and lust and all different kinds of stuff. And when you, when you live in sin, you are a slave to sin. It may not make sense to some people, but it's in the word. You are in bondage. And that's why it's so important to repent. You didn't find it. Oh, I see that purple toothbrush. But uh, it's so important to repent. But we need to be uplifting one another and encouraging each other and not judging people because we don't know nobody's story. We don't know what they've been through. And we all living off grace and mercy. We can't judge people we should not be judging people um instead we should be edifying the body of christ which is what i try my best to do i'm not perfect but i do try to edify the body of christ and um you know work for work for the kingdom do this kingdom work because this is work right here this take a lot of courage a lot of boldness but i pray Every day I pray for boldness. I pray for courage. I pray for faith. Let me tell y'all something. I ain't used to have my faith wasn't crazy. I, but every day I aspire to have crazy faith. My faith used to be weak as tap water. But you want me to tell you how I got my faith so big and ready at this point to step out on faith and have that crazy faith? The Word of God. Meditating on the word of God day and night. The, the word of God say you meditate on the word day and night. And so that's what I do. You could be a hearer of the word or you could be a doer of the word. And I choose to be a doer of the word. It's a lot of people who say they Christians, who say they who say they followers of Jesus, but they attitudes and stuff reflect anything but they they um what's the word I'm looking for? They um the choices that they make, that wasn't the word that I was looking for, but the choices that they make don't reflect followers of of Jesus. Jesus is love, okay? He is love. God loves all of us. He loves me. He loves my baby. He loves Rachel. He loves y'all. He loves all of us. I don't know nobody who would get a one and only begotten son to die on the cross for the whole world. Now, that's love. That's love right there. That's unconditional love. He loves us, but he hates sin. God despises sin. He will not tolerate sin. If you are living in sin and you die in your sin without repentance, you will not inherit his kingdom. That is the word. That's the word. That's the word. That's it. Let me help you with that. I'm going to back you up on that because that is the word. It's so funny because I was actually reading this. Speak up for the people um, now. I was reading this <laughs> earlier today. I'm just trying to find it. But when you die in your sin, I mean, that's not when you die in your sin. When you die, you should want to be comfortable comfortable in knowing that you're going to be with the Lord because like my friend Nikki was saying the other day on the live we we didn't agree on everything but that's still my girl and uh like she said when your when your time ran out what she what she said when God pulled that punch card when he pulled <laughs> when God pulled that punch card that's it it's a wrap for you so you need to be confident in knowing you're going to be with the Lord when you die because tomorrow is not promised. It ain't promised to me. It ain't promised to her. And another thing, while I still looking for this scripture, every day that you wake up, God is not done with you yet. Every day I have to tell myself that. We take for granted that God is going to wake us up in the morning. But every day that he wakes you up, he's saying, I'm not done with you yet. I still got some more things I need you to do. It's some more things I want you to fulfill. You still got purpose. I still got a plan for you, for your life. 
So you need to get in the presence of God. And if you don't know what your purpose is, if you don't know why you was put here on this earth, you need to get in the presence of God and you need to find out because that's what I had to do. I was lost. I didn't know why I was here. When I used to be depressed, I used to wonder why is I'm here. What is I'm here for? I don't know how to dance. I don't know how to sing. I don't know how, why am I here. I'm going to sit right there. What you want me to Galatians, read this? Yeah, Galatians 5, 19. Okay, my mouth is big, mouth of the south. So she want me to read, uh, Sue's want me to read Galatians 5. Go up, stop right here. 19, or go on. Just verse 19. Oh. 19 through 22. Oh, start at 19. Mm -hmm. Okay, Galatians chapter 5, verse 19. When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like these. Let me tell you again, as I have before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. I've shared that before. And another thing is, you know, I'm, I'm, I aspire to be one of the evangelists who I'm going to bring you the whole truth and nothing but the truth. <laughs> I mean, I don't play around with these. People may think that I'm just looking for a hobby to do or I'm, I get bored or something. Now, God be trying to use me and speak to me. But uh, I just, I don't know. He put stuff in my spirit and I feel like I need to come and, come and share it with people and spread the word of God. But um, I think a lot of people, they just look at me and they... They may receive the truth from somebody else, but they don't want to hear it from me. You know, people still looking at, oh, you just had a baby out of wedlock. Well, I did. But the day that I gave birth to my baby, that's when I got saved. And so I'm practicing abstinence. And, you know, I turned my back to some sins. I no longer do those those things anymore that I used to do. So, uh, you know, the Bible says that we are to be living sacrifices. It says that our bodies are not our own. And when Jesus died on that cross for us, he paid a price for all of us that we could not pay. And so we are not our own. Our bodies are our temples. Mm -hmm. So um, I apologize for yelling at the congregation, at the church. <laughs> But y'all was giving me hell. Your church mean. Yeah, somebody said, your church is mean. Somebody said, you holler at your, your congregation. Well, I'm sorry. I, I'm, he's, I'm still, he's, he's still working on me. He's still working on me. So, but for me to be here right now, I'm telling you, like, man, this big right here. <laughs> it's major. It's major. Major moves right here. For real. But I don't, I don't be meaning no harm, y'all. I be really coming from a good place for real, for real. I'm cool. I'm calm, collected. I'm that's me. Like I'm, I'm loving. I'm goofy. Then don't try to figure me out, cause you ain't gonna figure me out. You ain't gonna try. Don't start on even try. But uh, yeah. Sometimes I'm, I mean, I'm working. I'm working on being gentle. I'm working on trying to give people the truth. Jesus. Yeah, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Not my truth, but the truth, the word of God. Yeah. And and not hurt people's feelings. But see, you can't be offended by the word of God, because if you offended by the word of God, then that means it's something within you that you need to fix. You need to do some soul searching. So you can't be offended by it. You know, people they don't want to be rebuked. They don't want to be reproofed. Who does? Yeah, I, I don't, hey, the Holy Spirit rebuke me all the time. And I be wanting to get mad and get sassy and get attitudes and I have to pipe down. You know, shoot, conviction don't feel good. It don't feel good to my flesh. I be like, man, man. But. I got it. I get you. You know, but uh, in order to grow, you need to be. Rebuke. God says He rebukes and He repute re re reproofs those whom He loves. So, yes. But if you don't know what your purpose is, I suggest you find out what your purpose is before your uh, 
What do you before God punched that time card? Pull that time. Pull that time clock. Cause we all, we seriously know, we all have a purpose. We all have a purpose. We all have some gifts in us. Um, and so we just have to seek the Lord and get in the presence of the Lord to um, to discover those gifts and to discover why we was put on this earth in the first place. But, you know, while we're here, we should be encouraging each other. We should be uplifting each other. We should not be hating on each other. Uh, we should be trying to live in unity because, you know, uh, united we stand and divided we fall. And it's the, they don't go just for the United States, but they go for the body of Christ. We need to be united. We United we stand, divided we fall. And it's too much division in the body of Christ. And the things that are going to are that are to come and the things that are taking place now, we need to be united to, to, to fight against the enemy. I mean, if you on, on, on team Jesus, then you on the winning team. You on the winning team, but the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness, they collide, okay? So God is separating the wheat from the tear. He's separating the, the kingdom of light and he's separating the kingdom of darkness. And he said that lukewarm Christians, he would spit you out of his mouth. That's what the word of God says. So if you lukewarm, you need to pick a side. You need to get on the hot side or you need to get on the cold side. Whatever side Jesus is on, that's the side I'm on. So that's all I got for y'all today. So I pray, um, I hope it ain't no bad blood. <laughs> so the young lady who said, are you going to call us slow today? <laughs> <laughs> I apologize to you if I said that. I didn't go back and watch it. And another thing, too, I do go back and watch it and go back and listen to my videos, especially uh, when I do watch parties. I go back and listen. And I and I get with the Lord, and I be like, Lord, you know, how did I do? Is there anything I said or, or shouldn't have said? And he'll let me know. I might not feel instant conviction right then. <laughs> But he'll yeah, let know me know. I'm, you know I'm going a, I'm to a get you together. And she going to get me together. Babe, I'm going to be A1 after a while, y'all, with <laughs> her and, and the Holy Spirit and all the Man, listen here. I'm going to be so A1. But I'm going to be humble, though. Because, you know, it, God, ain't nobody perfect, man. We And none of us yeah. ain't perfect. Um, <clears throat> None of us ain't perfect. We all trying to figure it out. But I, if, if God is not the head of your life, I strongly encourage you to put God first. Make God the head of your life. It's worth it. It's, it's well worth it. I wouldn't go back to my old life to, for nothing in the world. I just, I wouldn't. I, but, uh, yeah, I hope it ain't no bad blood between me and nobody because I was really sincere. I wasn't trying to be no car baby or none of that. But I apologize, ma'am, if I call, call anybody slow or <laughs> whatever. <laughs> I'm laughing to keep from crying, but I, if I said that, I apologize. That was wrong. <laughs> that was not a woman of God. So I'm a, I'm praying for self control. <laughs> and another thing, my post, I want to say this before we close out, is people who really do want to listen to me and want to hear what God has me to say. So if you know that you don't like me or you know that, uh, or uh, you know you don't like my messages or what I teach about. Somebody said you preach about the same thing. Then just keep strolling. When you see me go live, just keep strolling or unfollow me or, uh, or delete me, unfriend. That go for friends. That go for family because God is working on me. But I'm going to be me. And I am straightforward. I am who I am. I'm confident. I know my purpose. I know what I'm called to do. And... And it's just me. I'm just real. I'm just in a raw. This just this just me. I'm a straight shooter. And I'm not gonna change for nobody, but I'm gonna let God change me. Hello. Hello. From the inside out. The inside out. The doors of the church is open. Amen. They open. <laughs> so I don't be playing church, but you know, God said where there are two or three gathered in my name, I am in the midst. And if we hey, this is church right here. I don't play this. I take this very seriously. So that's all I got for y'all. Y'all be blessed.